Alright, let's do a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the Night Sky editor for the video game Night Sky. So, first things first, there's probably two things you want to have on your desktop or easily accessible. First, the actual editor file, which will just bring you this, I'll get to that in a second, and the game files, which will normally be found, which if you download it from Steam will be found in Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, then Night Sky. I've copied these to my desktop so I can work with them easier and so I'm not editing the vanilla game files. So you have Night, Night Sky and then you have all of these files. What you want for editing levels is World, not HD World. Like I said, so you, you have the editor here and it wants an INI or bin file. You'll find those in various places. I will, for example, look at Rana Caverns and then Levels. This has the alternative levels first because it's alphabetical, and then the normal levels. Let's arbitrarily open normal level 1. Drag the configuration file here, and here is the level. So let's talk about the level editor. There's four main modes. Tile, physical, joint, and object with hotkeys Z, X, C, and V. X, C, and V will all look the same, so physical, joint, and object editor will all appear the same while tile editor appears differently. Since tile editor is a is what the game will actually look like, let's talk about that first. You have a tile set, which is determined by the tile set in the files, so Rana Caverns tile sets. You can use more than one, but no game files will. If you go to a different tile set, there's be nothing there. Anyway, you it, this is fairly simple. You go to one of the two pages, click a tile, and then you can drag it and put it wherever you want. So if you want to make a sky full of uh, stalagmites, go ahead. This is fairly simple, and there's not too much you can do other than I'll say to make it look pretty, you probably want to use some of these small details to create little humps on the ground so it's not all just flat, whatever. Little details like edges and things. And then, uh, well, another thing I'll talk about is, right now is, you may notice the just blue here, because on the tile set, there is nothing in that space. However, if you're familiar with the what I've done on this mod so far, this blue will show up as lava in the final game because although it's not on the regular tile set, on the HD tile set, which the HD the wrong folder, which the HD version of the game will read off of, it will the tile set does have lava. Right here I added the I added lava tiles to those spaces. But the editor reads off the SD ver the original SD version. You can't, you'll notice that, but it's the same levels for both. If you go to HD World and then look at the levels, there's just the level pictures and no actual level files. So let's go back. Let's go back to where we were and talk about the other th three parts of the level editor. First, the big, the big one, physical. This is the actual level geometry. So this affects how the ball actually rolls. You will edit this by clicking on physical, the red diamonds which are physical editors. You can create new ones by hitting shift. If you have something selected while you hit shift, it will copy what you already have. See, I now have the I now have these lines twice. They're moving around with the with the other lines. I'll delete to delete that for now. Or if you have nothing selected and hit, you'll just create a blank physical object, or blank any object, depending on what level you're on. So, physical joints or objects. Anyway, the best way to edit this is to, cl is to click on the red diamond, then hit Open Editor. This, clicking on each of these S's down here shows you the different paths this one is set up for. Some levels by default have all the paths for one screen set on the same 
object, some don't. So here, if you notice the red, the not well, the orange dots on here show which one is selected when I click on these S's. You can either drag or you can create a new one. I'm going to right click on this empty space, then regular click to select it, and I can start drawing new paths. Hold shift and you'll have a start of a new path. You can place a new spot on the path as long as you are holding shift. Now, what was this? No, what was I going to say? At this point, I'll talk about grid size. Grids, the grid you, size you can change by hitting the Q and E keys, and it and it affects how accurately you can place things. At grid six, I can place it pretty accurately. Go all the way down to grid one, I can place it on extremely accurately. And up at grid twelve or twenty-four, there's only a very few spots you it snaps. <laughs> Um, one other thing to mention is the is the type of the physical path. You notice if you click on this, it says type equals line. That's pretty important. If you do not specify the type, the collision will not exist. Most of the time, it'll it will be a line, but some other objects can be polygons or other or other shapes. I won't get into that too much. This is just a basic tutorial. Plus, I'm not exactly sure how all of that stuff works all the time. Look at other levels to see what they use. Let, okay, now let's talk about joints. There are no joints on this level, so I'll so I'll open another one to see, to look at. I believe level level eight has joints on it. So hit C and get to joint editor. Joints hold different things together. You place more joints by select same as more joint. Uh, physical geometry by pr pressing shift then clicking. But you notice joints have two arrows on them. If you hold c control and right click or control and left click, it connects two objects. Of course, this joint does not is not specify what it does. Whereas you notice the ones at existing levels specify that they are type equals pivot or in some cases some other joints. Though the most ones you'll see are pivot. Some are rotational. But this. It specifies what the joint does. Anyway, you you have the two objects connected to the joint, and wherever that joint it is relative to those two objects, the objects will rotate between it. Or in the case of some other objects, like this one, is not a this this object here at the top of the chain is fixed. It will not move, so the joint so this joint will just rotate between this the end of the fixed object and the hanging object. And finally, let's talk about, let's go back here to the simpler level, let's talk about actual objects. These little blue circular things are objects. Some, not all of them will show up, actually most of them do not show up in the editor, but they will show up in the, in the level. Like the, since this is object fern, variant 2, variants are different, oh wait, just different ways the fern can look if you look in the file in the game files you can see all the different images of ferns and whatever so when the game is launched it will have a little picture of a fern here or this one these are all ferns or this is image stars set and it's set to flicker I'm not going to get into all the different things objects can do but I'll talk about a couple of key ones so th this is this flickers here, but it's a star and has a flicker effect put on it. Now let's talk about the most important. Oh, these are palm tree leaves and the actual tree. Let's talk about the most important one, object, the start. There should be one of these in all the levels, and uh, it sort of needs to be there. Now this object values A through D to define what powers you have in the level. I believe. A is boost, B is break, and I don't know. Look at the different levels for those. I don't know these offhand, but it, it define what powers you have. I believe C is the power. It, one, either C or D is the power to move at all. You know, if you remember some gravity levels in the game, you can only alter gravity with with S, and you cannot 
roll the ball back and forth. But without running into walls or whatever. And we'll load up one more, more level to talk about se talk about secret exits, which are another another good object file to talk about, seeing as it's one of the only other key objects. Normal level ten says the secrets, right? So here, oops, by the way, spoilers for my mod. Here we have the secret exit and the exit and the secret door. The exit is physically what triggers the you got a star animation and ends the level, and the secret door is the object that looks like a little door that sort of indicates that the exit is there. Ne so neither of these have, to f have a physical appearance in the editor, but and the sec actual secret exit doesn't have an appearance at all, but the door will show up in the when you load the actual game. The other, the other objects here are fog. So, um, uh, adult, let's see what other else is there to say. Hotkeys for screens, the numbers 1, 2, and 3 go between the three screens. If you want to move more accurately to see two screens at once, if you hold space bar then click, you can drag the screen around, and you can go up pretty high, actually. I should also mention that on some, you'll already see it on some levels, but you can drag, but like you can drag physical pads up off the screen, as well. You can put it pretty much anything up off the screen, to an to an extent, but you'll you won't see it in game, but it will still be there. And uh, saving and quitting, you pro you'll want, probably want to say save, which will save both the bin file and the INI, fi INI file. So if you're trying to copy levels around, remember to get both files. Anyway, save is up here, or it has control S. If you don't remember what the editors are, they're here. Left, right, center, that's there. Um, Q and E, Q and e toggle grid, si grid size again, and um, I believe that's really all I have to say about a basic tutorial for this. Be sure to comment and subscribe, or whatever YouTubers say when they sign out. I don't know. Anyway, if you do have further questions, sure, leave a comment or contact me in some way. I might be able to help you, might not. But anyway, thanks for watching this. Hopefully this is helpful.